Hello, everybody. Since we already familiar with the structure of epithelia, let's uh, provide some examples um, on functions of epithelia because in histology we always care about the relation between the structure and function. A very common function is to to cover and to protect to protect and to cover uh, either internal or external surfaces so the epithelia might be lining surfaces or cavities a good example would be epidermis the stratified squamous keratinized epithelium that that uh, protects uh, the skin and uh, an inner cavity lined with epithelium could be the peritoneal cavity which is lined with mesothelium that has a shape of simple squamous epithelium. Also we should mention the barrier function the barrier function which is an unspecific immune protection. An excellent example for this would be the enterocytes lining the intestine. And we already know that the junctional complex consisting of uh, the tie junctions, the zonula adherens and the desmosomes form a barrier junctional complex form a barrier between bacteria and their toxins on the luminal side of the epithelium and the blood and lymph vessels below beneath the epithelium another function would be to, to which the epithelia might be specialized uh, is to transport there could be either resorption or an opposite there could be secretion or filtration and even the exchange of gases is example of transport. So let's have an example with the blood air barrier. So if we got uh, the the lung alveoli, they are lined with uh, simple squamous type 1 pneumocytes. These are the most flat, perhaps the most flat cells in our body. And there are also type 2 pneumocytes which are rather cuboidal. The type 2 pneumocytes contain granules of a substance that forms a film that covers the interior surface of the alveolar, alveolar epithelium. So here's uh, lung alveolus. And uh, this layer is called surfactant and it reduces the amount of mechanical work that is necessary for, for expansion of the alveoli during every breath or inspiration. So we got the uh, squamous uh, type 1 pneumocytes 
we go to cuboidal type 2 pneumocytes. They are sitting on a basal membrane of the alveolar epithelium that is in close touch with the basal membrane or basal lamina, I should say, of uh, blood capillaries that could be found in the in the uh, interalveolar septa. These capillaries are lined with endothelium. capillary endothelium and it, the blood vessel also has this basal lamina so there are actually two basal lamina fusing in this part so there's the barrier that needs to be crossed by oxygen as well as by the carbon dioxide Another example of how cells could be specialized to transport function would be the proximal kidney tubule. It has a basal membrane and the cells are rather, rather low cuboidal. They have very long microvilli increasing their uh, surface available for resorption. Their lateral cell border has interdigitations and also the basal compartment is folded into what we call basal labyrinth. So I will draw two adjacent epithelial cells as examples. Well actually all the cells would be here similar. So it's the proximal kidney tubule. And its epithelium has very long microvilli. Increasing the resorption surface. There are interdigitations on the lateral, in the lateral domain. And there is this basal labyrinth. Again, increasing the surface uh, available for, trans for transport processes. Most of these transport processes are active, so no wonder we will find mitochondria here among the folds, providing the energy for the active transport. We can't see individual mitochondria in routine sections, but we do see a striation pattern resulting of, from this folds and dark and lighter areas. So this is called basal striation phenomena in the optical microscope. Because there is a huge transport across this epithelium. Another function would be to perceive. And according to the origin of these uh, epithelial cells, we can distinguish primary sensory cells or neuroepithelium. An example of which would be the photoreceptors of the retina. So we have the, the rods, the metabolic part of the cell, and the photosensitive segment of the cell. For the rods are for the grayscale vision, and we have three types of cones, again with um, the metabolic segment with the nucleus, and the photosensitive segment of the cell where light is transformed into action potential. These photosensitive segments are oriented towards 
the pigment epithelium of the retina, that's the outer layer of simple cuboidal epithelium. The cells are accumulating melanin granules, pigment granules. So it's a pigment epithelium. And we have the rods and cones with the metabolic region with the nucleus and some organelles and a photosensitive segment. Light comes from this direction through other layers of retina so the photosensitive segments are most distant from the light source but also uh, some reflections of other directions are are neutralized by the pigment epithelium thus increasing the lateral resolution of the human retina so these cells are neurons by origin and they secondarily are arranged into uh, epithelial uh, arrangement, unlike secondary sensory epithelium. An example of which would be the taste buds, the cells in the taste buds. So this would be the taste bud, for example on the the tongue or in the soft palate. The opening is called the taste pore and inside we can find uh, epithelial cells, uh, the sensory cells, but in this case these are not nerve cells. the nerve impulses are coming from are starting here and are carried away by the afferent nerve fibers uh, of uh, special sensory neurons nerves. So we got the uh, taste cells here, the epithelial cells, and we got some supporting cells in the neighborhood. supporting or sustentacular cells. Of course there are more, more examples of various functions of epithelia uh, such as contractile function. So another example of the function is to contract. which might seem unusual uh, in epithelial cells but it occurs in glands if this would be a circulatory portion of some gland so here are the cells that are producing some secretion you can find myoepithelial contractile cells embracing the secretory portion of the gland and increasing the pressure which promotes the evacuation of the secretion. The, these myoepithelial cells have a shape with 
many processes and they are embracing the whole alveolus in 3D and they are squeezing out the secretion. So this would be a secretory alveolus of some gland. Yeah, myoepithelial contractile cells. Another function could be to promote reproduction. Namely, reproduction, sorry. Namely, the gametogenesis. Let's take an example uh, from the uh, testis where you would find these seminiferous tubules in the testis. So these are seminiferous tubules of testis. And uh, the spermatogenesis that runs here from puberty on starts with spermatogonia, which are kind of stem cells with self-renewal potential. However, the spermatogenesis is supported by epithelium with many cell projections. These are called Sertoli cells, and in their projections, they are hiding and protecting and supporting later phases of formation of male gametes. So they are promoting spermatogenesis. They have uh, these uh, tight junction cell contacts in between, so they are literally isolating the inner compartment by a series of tight junctions, forming what we call immunoprivileged uh, compartment, where immune cells cannot enter, I mean immune cells that could migrate from the from the uh, blood vessels surrounding the tubules. So this is uh, the basal membrane. These are, this is the epithelium that supports the spermatogenesis called Sertoli cells and with their tight junctions because the immune system there's a danger the immune system could be could be uh, provoked by the later stages of spermatogenesis that does did not occur in the human body dur during the limited period where immune system uh, underwent training for in an inducing of immunotolerance because the spermatogenesis starts with puberty. So, and we we got the spermatogonia here, basally in the basal compartment. These are stem cells that undergo mitotic division and self renewal. So there is this. That is mitosis, and some fraction of these uh, differentiates into uh, type 1 spermatocytes that underwent the first meiotic division. And uh, the result of this is type 2 spermatocytes. 
that undergo the second meiotic division. So your second meiotic division. And the outcome of that is a tetrade. So four cells called spermatids, which are not mature sperm cells yet. They need to undergo a differentiation process called spermiohistogenesis to form mature sperm cells or spermatozoa. So this list or of examples of various uh, functions of epithelia was not ex exhaustive, but it was just to illustrate various functions. Very often a single epithelium has more than one function, they overlap, they might be complementary, etc.